Welcome to another edition of the program as you answer the call. I am Fatima Umaru Hadija, your regular host. For appointment as chairman of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria. Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. Aye, sorry. Confirmation of new NACOM board members by the Senate tops list of stories in our news diary segment. And later in the program, our Spotlight segment focuses on NACOM's strategic plan for effective enlightenment campaigns for the 2020 Hajj. And don't forget, making the Hajj and stakeholder segments are also in the package. Stay tuned for the details and more. <laughs> Thanks for being there. We begin the program with the news diary as presented from our studio. On Thursday, the 30th of January 2019, the Senate confirmed Sheikh Zikirullah Olakule Hassan as the new chairman of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nakon. This was sequel to the approval and submission of the report of the Committee on Foreign Affairs, which screened the new chairman and other members of the board. Chairman of the committee, Senator Adamubul Kachwa, presented the report to the Senate plenary. The committee wishes to express its gratitude to the Senate for the opportunity to serve in this capacity and screening of this group of Nigerians that are expected to bring their wealth or experience to bear on the management of Hajj matters in the next four years. Senators made contributions on the report. I believe that uh, God willing, it will be an asset to the operation of the National Hajj Commission. Following this, the report was considered in the Committee of the Whole and a question was put by the Senate President. Will the Senate approve the nomination of Zikirullah Ola Kunle Hassan as chairman for appointment as chairman of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. Aye, sorry. With this, Zikrullah Olakule Hassan and other commissioners were confirmed. The three executive commissioners confirmed along with him are Abdullah Maga Jahardawa, Northeast Executive Commissioner of Operation Inspection and Licensing, Nura Hassan Yakasai, Northwest. Executive Commissioner of Policy, Personnel Management and Finance, and Sheikh Momo Suleiman Imonike, South South Executive Commissioner of Planning, Research, Statistics, Information and Library Services. Also confirmed are six part time commissioners representing each geopolitical zone of the country. They are Mrs. Halima Jibril, Niger State, represents North Central, Abba Jato, Borno State, represents Northeast. Garba Omar Sokoto State is representing Northwest. Others are Ibrahim Ogonia Ama, Ebony State represents Southeast. Sadiq Onye Saniene Musa, Delta State represents South South. And Mrs. Akintunde Basirat Olainka, Ogun State represents Southwest. There are representatives from ministries, departments, and agencies whose work is relevant to the Hajj exercise. These are Shogu Dogo, Ministry of Aviation. Nura Abbarimi, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Rabi Bello Issa, Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ujudud Sharif, Ministry of Health, Aminu Bako Yerima, Nigeria Immigration Service, Ibrahim Ishaq Nuhu, Central Bank of Nigeria. There are also Dr. Bala Muhammad representing Jamaatun Nasrul Islam, JNI, 
and Yusuf Chinedozi Nwoha represents the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs. Meanwhile, the newly confirmed Nakhon chairman Zikrullah Hassan said his vision is to sustain the gains recorded by his immediate predecessor Barista Abdullah Mukhtar Muhammad, particularly on Hajj Saving Scheme and Kickstarting the Hajj Institute. Zikrullah stated this when answering questions from senators during the screening of the board nominees by the Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs, headed by Senator Adamubul Kachua. One of those key elements that has made Hajj always leaping and unaffordable is the fact that every year we are not in a position to control the price. And I know we need a savings scheme on the immediate. The Hajj savings scheme, I believe, will be the answer to be able to put in abeyance the issue of Hajj fair increase on the rise. So for me, the Hajj savings scheme is something which we must start. If Malaysia could do so, if Indonesia could do so, there's no reason we cannot do so, and even immediately. Beyond this, uh, it has come to the knowledge of all that Hajj is now a profession. I can say so that Hajj has become a profession. Things that affect millions of Muslims in the world must be a profession. I also am aware that it's also in the uh, kitty, the Hajj Training Institute. You must begin to train anybody who wants to involve in Hajj. He promised that he will ensure that Nakhon Act and other guidelines are strictly adhered to. Senators at the screening made their contributions and applauded the achievements of the past chairman, Barista Abdullah Mukhtar. I have no doubt in my mind that you have the capacity uh, for the job and you are going to bring some professionalism, just like what your predecessor did. You can consult with the meet this chairman. Thank you, sir. That is in addition to the other thing that you have mentioned as part of your vision and vision. Thank you very much. This is a compliment to you. Thank you, Thank you. Chairman of the board, yes, you should know that we in the Senate and indeed the Committee on Foreign Affairs are your partners. And don't spare any effort to get in touch with us on any matter that concerns your operation. The National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nakhon, has flagged off the construction of hotel-like accommodation and multipurpose hall at the Kaduna Hajj camp. Kaduna State Governor Malam Nasri Erufai unveiled the project. Today, 2nd February 2020. <laughs> Speaking at the occasion, Governor Erufai appreciated Nakon for its foresight in embarking on such projects, saying that his government will actively monitor the execution of the project to ensure quality and timely completion. I want to assure the Commission that on our part as Kaduna State Government, we are going to take an active interest and uh, be monitoring the implementation of the project. We welcome this investment in Kaduna State. We appreciate the investment and we hope that whatever the Kaduna State Government can do to contribute to make the project a reality and a success, as well as operations, I promise that we will do it. In his remarks, outgoing Nakhon Chairman Barista Abdullah Mukhtar Mohammed, who was represented by the Commission's outgoing Commission of Operation, Abdullah Madibu Saleh, said similar projects are being executed in other states across the country. Contract has been awarded for the construction of similar hotel-like projects in Lagos, Abuja, Kano, uh, Yola, and Sokoto. Some have uh, already witnessed the commencement of activity. The projects, which include mosques, event centers, clinics, amongst others, are being executed at Hajj camps across the country, with funds accrued from the Hajj Development Levy. Alhamdulillah, if you are just tuning in, the program is As You Answer the Call, a public enlightenment presentation on the activities of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON. Awareness campaigns to educate prospective pilgrims is a major component of the Hajj exercise. NACON leaves nothing to chance in ensuring that this happens. In our next segment, Spotlight, we focus on these plans and how they impact on the Hajj exercise. The details. 
لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك As preparations for the 2020 Hajj exercise gets underway, State Muslims Pilgrims Welfare Boards are coming up with the weekly enlightenment programs for prospective pilgrims in their states. This is in line with Nakun registration guidelines which says the state's Muslim Pilgrims Welfare Boards shall provide adequate training programs with varied and comprehensive training materials as well as centers as near as possible to the locality of the intending pilgrims. The training materials must be based on the relevant manual provided by Nakan. A certificate of attendance and competence must be provided to each attendee. Each intending pilgrim participating must have not less than 70% attendance score. For the effective management of the enlightenment campaigns, Nakan streamlined the areas of focus for its Pilgrims Education Division. The areas are heart rights, civic education, and women's special needs. Omar Bala is the head of Pilgrims Civic Education at Nakon. He talks about the imperative of awareness creation among prospective pilgrims. It's to make sure that each and every intended pilgrim who fed his money to perform Hajj has achieved Hajj Mabrur. How can you achieve Hajj Mabrur? That is, you have to know the nitty gritty, the do's and don'ts of Hajj before you achieve Hajj Mabrur. And uh, that is where the national ulama team and the various state ulama team are collaborating in order to educate and enlighten the pilgrims on how to conduct their Hajj. And then in addition to that, how to do how to behave as a good ambassadors of Nigeria while in Saudi Arabia. The Commission is leaving nothing to chance in ensuring that pilgrims take part in the various enlightenment programs. We are encouraging the state, various state pilgrims welfare board to ensure that all intended pilgrims are encouraged to participate in the sensitization and enlightenment program for their pilgrims so that at least at the end of the day the pilgrims will be more enlightened, more educated on uh, how to go about their religious uh, activity. We want to encourage them also to ensure that those who refuse to participate in the exercise in the enlightenment program are, you know, are not given the necessary permission to partake in the exercise. Expectedly, the Enlightenment will, among others, touch on the following areas. Luggage handling, pilgrims' education on prohibited items, awareness creation on how to handle travel documents, how pilgrims should move about during the Hajj, the special needs of women, as well as medical and physical requirements. Others include visa of a stay and abscondment, how to make good use of facilities in apartments and mashair, as well as being security conscious. To stay out of trouble, intended pilgrims are enlightened on how to abide by the rules and regulations of Saudi Arabia and that of Nigeria. They are also taught civic duties. When it comes to the issue of uh, civic orientation, this section is talking about all aspects except except monastic which include from the time the pilgrim will handle his uh, passport at the time when the pilgrim will join the queue to board the aircraft up to the time when he arrives either Medina or Mecca and then when he was give, is going to be given the accommodation in Mecca or Medina and all other aspects, including the issue of sanitation and uh, good conduct. The Enlightenment campaign will focus further on time management, especially as they relate to observance by key Hajj rites, such as pelting of the Jamarat, Tawafu Lifada, and so on. Nakun also says 
it will step up campaign during the 2020 Hajj on how pilgrims can avoid falling victims of fraudsters when making monetary transactions or fixing gold tooth. And uh, our intention, inshallah, 2020 Hajj, we will do more to enlighten our pilgrims on how to go about changing their money, fixing of gold teeth for those who want. Preparing pilgrims to understand the nature of the Hajj is very central to the success of every Hajj. 2020 is not going to be any different. This, therefore, explains the serious attention being paid to pilgrims' enlightenment. Masha Allah, you are still watching as you answer the call. Coming up next is Making the Hajj. Tonight, Sheikh Hamisu Suleiman is our guest. He takes us through discussions on the chanting of Talbiya during Hajj. Let's hear him. Many supplications are recommended for pilgrims in the course of Hajj or Umrah. The prominent one is the Talbiya. What does Talbiya stand for? When and where are pilgrims expected to recite the Talbiya? And in what manner? Tonight on Making the Heart, Sheikh Hamid Suleiman answers these and other questions. He begins by explaining the meaning and significance of the Talbiya. Because we are answering the call made by our father, Nabi Allah Ibrahim, when Allah said, Wa'adhim fin nas, proclaim among mankind to come to them perform the Hajj. So that announcement, then you say, Labbaik, I answer, I answer, I answer the call of my Lord. Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik. That's the meaning. I answer the call of my Lord. Labbaik, la sharika lak. Oh, my Lord, I proclaim and I answer your call. You have no partner. In alhamda, all thanks, wa ni'mata, all favor, laka is for you, Allah. All mulk and power belongs to you. La sharika lak. There is no other object to be worshipped except you alone. This was you are proclaiming, you are announcing your belief in the monetism of Islamic uh, monetism. When are pilgrims expected to begin reciting the Talbiya in the course of Hajj or Umrah? In what manner should the Talbiya be recited? Talbiya, from the right, that, right from the time you put on your ihram, and it's recommended that if you do labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika laka labbaik, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mug, la sharika, I'm do it about five times, you pause, then you do salat in Nabi, then you pray for yourself, for your country, for your people, for your leaders, then you continue again. What are the different ways in which the Talbiya should be recited by male and female pilgrims? Men should say it aloud. But females should say it with their low voice. But although they should say that they will be hearing it. Not inside. No. La bika Allahumma la bayk, la bayk la And not that somebody will be saying it and you will be following it. No. Everybody should engage himself or doing his own. Must pilgrims be chanting the Talbiya in all the locations where heart rites are observed? Well, everywhere. The only step you stop is the intent of Zulahijjah. When you are the first day, you are going through your Jamara. When you are at the Jamara, then you change it to Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamd. That's where you change it. But throughout, even when you are in Arafah, you are in Muzalifah, you will be saying it. Although you are advised to be saying other things, that supplications, as I said earlier, La ilaha illallah, Wahda'u la sharika la. The same thing, what you are saying like Talbiya is the same thing you are saying here, but in another form. Sheikh Hamisu Suleiman urges prospective pilgrims to ensure that they take advantage of the weekly enlightenment programs in their states in order to acquaint themselves with the Hajj rites and the different supplications to be offered while performing the Hajj. The quiz is next. Welcome to the quiz segment. Our last question on the program was, what is the name for the act of male pilgrims exposing their right shoulder during the Wafu Kudum? 
The correct answer is Editiba. The winner is Hanata Abdullah Bidda from Niger State. She provided the answer ahead of others. Hanata Abdullah will be contacted on how Nakon will reach her with the prize she won. A quiz winner will get 25,000 Naira cash prize. This is part of the Nakon's effort in social investment in Nigeria. For this week, the question is, Mention two acts that differentiate Hajj Ifrad and Hajj Tamatu E. I repeat, mention two acts that differentiate Hajj Ifrad and Hajj Tamatu E. Text your answer to the number showing on your screen. The winner will be the first person whose correct answer is received. All answers should carry name and location of sender. Good luck and happy viewing. Welcome back. Stakeholders is next. Tonight, we are looking at the partnership between the National Hash Commission of Nigeria, NACON, and the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA. Stay tuned for the details as we discuss the gains of this partnership in the area of containing drug trafficking during Hajj and Umrah. Stay tuned. <laughs> The screening of pilgrims' luggage is a routine undertaken by officers of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, and other sister agencies at all departure centers during the Hajj airlift operations. This is carried out to ensure that pilgrims don't take prohibited items into the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, particularly drugs. Mr. Femi Olorun Toba is the chief of staff to NDLEA chairman. He said, it is important for pilgrims to understand the implication of carrying items, especially drugs, which can be legal in one country, but illegal in another. Of course, you know, the drug trafficking terrain keeps on changing. For example, before, most of, the, most of the drugs that were being trafficked were, you know, cocaine, heroin, uh, cannabis, those were the type that you hear. But if you see what has been happening now, with respect to Saudi Arabia in particular, you see that the pattern has been tramadol, tramadol, tramadol. So even the, the, the fact that it's dynamic means that we too will continue to ensure that um, we, 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 we are not resting on our oars and we are also putting in new measures to ensure that we are able to beat the, the so-called ingenuity of the, of the criminals. Over time, Authorities have cautioned pilgrims not to entrust their luggage to third parties at any time in the course of their journey. Don't get involved in helping people to carry luggage because you never can tell what they are putting their luggages. And it does, it, it does happen. You will think you are a, a good Samaritan. You just get to the airport and somebody will say, please, can you assist me? So those type of things, we're telling Nigerians, don't be generous to that extent. No matter the measures taken by pilgrims, uh, by the National Hajj Commission, in conjunction with uh, NDLEA and other bodies, the ultimate responsibility lies with the pilgrim to be vigilant over their property, at, the, uh, at their luggage at the airports. The contribution of all stakeholders is another important measure to stem the tide of drug trafficking during the Hajj and Umrah period. NDLA cannot do it alone at the airport because even much as we are trying, if the airlines are not cooperating with us, if we are not having enough uh, cooperation from FAN and other users of the airport, even including the, the, the passengers, if the passengers themselves are not on their guard, if they are not called, uh, diligent and they allow themselves to be used, it will be difficult for NDLA to, to say, oh, we have put in enough uh, 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 measures. The NDLA is making efforts to have additional manpower and equipment, as well as double on its surveillance, not only during the Hajj or Umrah, but at all times. We will just continue to maintain our surveillance, we will continue to be vigilant as an organization, and we will make sure that we put our men on ground, the, the much that we have, to ensure that we cover all the bits, you know, for, that has been assigned to NDLA. Nakon on its part says it will not relent on its pilgrims' awareness campaigns in order to continue to have zero drug trafficking during Hajj and Umrah operations in Nigeria. That's it on this week's edition of the program as you answer the call. Join me same time next week for another package. Good night and thank you for watching. <laughs> Let our